Hey there, it's Aisla. This week on Business as Unusual, I'm chatting with Scott Reeb, a lawyer who's reshaping the industry with his innovative legal subscription model. Let's dive in. Business as Unusual is a thought-provoking podcast that explores the innovative strategies, disruptive ideas, and unconventional practices driving successful leaders and companies in the ever-evolving world of modern business. Subscribe, comment, and share for weekly inspiration with our host, Aisela. Hello, welcome to Business as Unusual. I'm here today with Scott Reed. Welcome to the show, Scott. Hey, thanks for having me. This should know. I'm happy to have you. So before we get into all of the other details, why don't you introduce a little bit about yourself and what your business is? Yeah, so I'm Scott Reed. I, I'm in the Dallas area. I'm a lawyer for 28 years. And I have my own firm, Reeb Law, and then we have a coaching and events company called Shatterproof Solutions. And my mission is to help uh, business owners grow scale uh, their businesses in a protected way. I'm sure you've heard all of the best lawyer jokes. Do you have a favorite? Or? No, I don't have any favorites. You're like, no favorites. Okay. I don't like any of them. Oh, that's good. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Well, and I think that speaks a little bit to why you probably started your business. There's a lot of, should we say prejudices or ideas about lawyers and what they do and what they don't do. Do you want to speak to any of that? Yeah, for sure. And I was probably part of that stereotype for a while. I was, I've litigated for most of my career. And when you're a litigator, you're billing by the hour or by the minute. And you're not successful in that day. If you haven't made someone mad, you're constantly picking fights. And so you're, it's a, a very kind of reactive way to, to live and a stressful way to live. And courtrooms are, are only really good for lawyers and judges, not for clients. And so in 2012, I figured out that I had a problem that I was getting repeat business from clients that were doing the same dumb things over and over again without calling me. And it was things that we could have easily avoided. And so I had to kind of, you know, do a deep dive. Is, is there something wrong with me? Are they not calling me for some reason? Is there something I can fix to stop that? And I really, it really came down to that. I just did not like the way we build them because they, every time they thought of me, they thought of money flying out of their pocket. We may have solved a problem for them, but it cost way too much money. And so they'd rather do anything, Google it, dial a friend, call their mom, than call me. So. In, in that process, I came, I had a vision of how, how can we have a system where entrepreneurs and small business owners like me could have access to legal services on an on-demand basis for a set monthly fee? Mm -hmm. Could there be a subscription for small business owners legal? And so I started calling around the business coaches and saying, hey, here's my vision. How can we do this? Most of them didn't get me, and I finally found one, uh, Clay Clark in Tulsa, Oklahoma, that's like, yep, that's a great idea. I get it, and I can help you build it. So in August of 2012, I hired him and his team, and they helped me build what has become the access plan, and now we help hundreds of small business owners shatterproof their businesses through the access plan by giving them this pro way to be proactive with that side of their business. And so we're stepping away from stereotypical law where – you know, we're the emergency room and we've become the primary care. We're your friend. We want to help you. We're on your side. We're not billing you for every second it takes to do your project. So we take longer to make more money. We have to be efficient, just like you have to be efficient. And it completely changed the dynamic of our client relationships and made all the difference in the world for the client. And kind of a side benefit was that it's made my life better too. That's, I love that story. One of the things that I find really interesting is that there is something about who you are, your life experiences that cause you to see this problem and then take an action. There's a lot of people in the world that, that are lawyers or maybe are frustrated with the system or recognize maybe they quit law. 
they don't actually say, wait, I'm going to take this action and come up with this whole new way of approaching this particular uh, profession. No. It, can you think of what set you up to to be the person who, who went in that direction? I think a few things. I mean, I think I have an entrepreneurial spirit. Even when I was in, an employee back in 92, when I was an employee with AT&T, in their general business systems, I was trying to find ways to, different ways to do things that would be more efficient. I found a way to, to sell extended warranties to clients of at and that were expiring. Started a really nice uh, mailbox revenue system. They loved it so much, they took it away from me and gave it to a minimum wage person. But it, but that's just kind of how I'm wired is to try to find better ways to do things. And so it just kind of made sense. And so then when I started in law firms, I would, would find different ways to bring money in. One of the things I figured out was that I really liked being able to get paid for the value I delivered rather than just having to bill my time. You know, I, mm -hmm. I had a quota, I had to, you know, the first three years I had a quota of hours I had to bill and it was, it, you know, every time I'm reading through files, just billing or on mm -hmm. conference calls with engineers, not having a clue what they're saying and just billing. But I ran into a family, we were building a family ambulance company, family owned ambulance company in Fannin, Texas. And they, they had a problem with the city. We worked that out and I'm having lunch with their son-in-law who was ambulance for them. And he's like, mom and dad really want to sell this business. Would you be able to help us sell it? And I'm like, yeah, I can help. And went to the partner of the firm and said, Hey, I think that we should do this on a contingency. Let's mm -hmm. take a percentage of whatever we can sell it for. So the better we do, the more money we make. And he loved the idea. And so we went to work selling that company, found a couple of different companies, got them bidding against each other and. This, so we sell the company, a check comes in at closing and we get paid and it felt so good to have delivered value to them and gotten paid mm -hmm. value. And so I started learning those lessons and I started, I did some catastrophic injury work and where people were really injured, you know, uh, paralyzed and were able to get them large settlements for my knowledge, skill, and ability and for the value that we gave them rather than how much time it took. So I, yeah. I could be very fast as long as I got them what they needed. It didn't matter if I was fast. I still got paid the value I I, that I had delivered. And so mm -hmm. that I think kind of along the way took me where I am to create a different type of a program. I also, I'm, I'm a, I'm a Crest follower. And really believe I'm called to be a peacemaker and then being in a litigation battle all the time really was, it was kind of a conflict for me. I mean, it's a necessary thing. You have to litigate sometimes, but doing it day in, day out really took a toll on me. I'm, and I think I'm much better suited, especially with my experience to be able to help clients avoid litigation when possible, coach them about what's going on be a manager of the process and bring on partner litigators to take, to take that stress. And it's, it works out better for the clients and, and for me. Thank you for sharing. So do you, do you see this as a, like a shift that other people like, I mean, let me step back and say, so how would you define success for yourself he, in, in this endeavor or just generally, however you want to take that? Man, success for me in general is that I'm fulfilling God's purpose in my life. Success for me in this venture is that we're putting together a system of, of providing excellent legal services in an affordable way that is scalable and so, and we're doing that by, we use a lot of technology. We're using different systems to work because we're really in the sales and customer service business. We just happen mm -hmm. to be delivering legal services. 
And so we mm -hmm. have to become very good at the customer service because they're paying us every month. And so we have to be providing them excellent customer service, which is one of our key core values. And we also need to make it simple so they understand mm -hmm. what's going on. And so it's about communication clearly. It's about organizing projects. It's about managing projects. It's about communicating clearly with the clients. And so, you know, can we do that in a scaled way with as small a footprint as possible so that our costs are low, so that we can keep our pricing low, so that it doesn't exclude every business iron? Because well, there are other people doing what I do now. When I started in 2012, I couldn't find anybody. It was me. Yeah. And so I had to just figure it out. Now there are other lawyers doing it and doing this. Not quite like I'm doing it, but doing it in different ways. But most of them are doing it on a higher level where let's say their minimum plan is $3,000 a month. My minimum plan is four twenty five dollars a month. Mm -hmm. uh, I really have a heart for helping those you know, the entrepreneurs that are trying to get to that first quarter million, not just the ones that are trying to get to $10 million. Mm -hmm. So I have to price it in a way that they can still get that information because in a lot of ways, it's so, it's so important in those foundational years. And if they don't get the right uh, service and information and build the right legal foundation to become shadowproof, 10 years in the future, they, they start having problems. It's just like our houses. If you don't have the right foundation, it starts cracking and you're in trouble. And sometimes they can prop it up, but it's almost never right again. Yeah. Are you, speaking of legal foundation, is it, are there industries that you do specialize in or don't? For instance, I know there's you know, medical professions or the hemp industry is kind of emerging, stuff like that, that you have preferences or rules about? I definitely have preferences. My, I, you know, if, I'm, if I can choose, I'm working with speakers, trainers, coaches, podcasters, people that are, you know, their life mission is to, to help other people be better. And then, so my, my influence is uh, exponential. So it's, I really enjoy that and do that. An example of that is that we represent the Ziegler company, which is Zig Ziegler's company and mm -hmm. them. And I'm a legacy certified trainer with their, with them so I can teach six messages. And so we're always working with people like that for sure. But then we have brick and mortar businesses. We have contractors, plumbers, HVACs, roofers, and we do have medical professionals that are, you know, small, small doctor's offices, small medical practice, holistic practices that are trying to be entrepreneurial and uh, find different ways to deliver that, those services. And we've helped several of them create their own uh, concierge subscription plans because that's one of our specialties. Nice. Do you, do you see this as becoming more widespread or? Yeah, I think that the billable hour is dead and the big law firms just don't know it yet. Uh, clients don't like it. They're starting to express that. And if you, if you were to read legal journals, there's talk about value-based billing. And so even big firms are starting to be faced with it and trying to find ways to deal with it. There's still times where it kind of becomes necessary to do it by the hour. I haven't found ways to do everything in a subscription or with flat fees, but it's getting much more narrow on what you would have to do by the hour. And so I, I think, yeah, I mean, I think it's an, a, a, an emerging idea that small firms are doing. Big firms are very resistant because uh, working by the hour for them is it's a cash cow. I mean, you have part levels of, you know, upper levels of partners that have associates under them and associates under them, and they're all billing. And it's just a machine. And right. until, you know, Fortune 500 companies say, hey, we're not going to pay that way anymore. Yeah. Doing it. But there, you know, I do read about that kind of pressure starting to to, to come to bear. And so I, I think eventually it will be very rare and you'll have lawyers having to, in some ways, commoditize their services. And it's, you know, they won't feel quite as special maybe, but it's, You've got to find a way to make legal services more affordable. And then, yeah, I, I believe that there's really some conflict of interest when you're charging by the hour. Mm. Because in the back of my mind, I can take as much time as I want to on a project. 
and figure out how much, if I, and it's just a simple math formula. If I want to make this much money, I have to build this many hours. And I know that lawyers are doing that math. Mm -hmm. We're doing it consciously and some of them are doing it unconsciously. And the clients are always wondering if it's happening. And so to truly be on the same side, you have to have transparent billing practices so that they know exactly what's happening, how long it's taking, why it's taking that long. And, you know, doing that on flat fees or tiered fees, still different pro types of projects makes a, makes it a lot more sense from the client's point of view and makes them more comfortable with paying the legal fees when they know that there's limits on it, that you can't take advantage of them when they're not watching because they don't understand what, what you're saying on the bills. And so it, it just, it strengthens those re the relationship, which makes everything better. I can, I can really see that. I feel like the, my different experiences with people in the legal profession is that there's also a big education component that is often needed, right? Like when I'm talking to the lawyer that set up my company, I have all sorts of questions about what, you know, what should it be? an LLC or, you know, and I've, I, I, I hear things from people and so I'm asking these questions and she does a flat fee for like startups and things like that. So, but, and, and that was, it made it easy for me to ask those questions and not feel like I needed to be like very, you know, insistent and precise and not take the time to best understand what was going to be the best setup for my situation. And so I, I could see how that would be very helpful for people in feeling a sense of also confidence and trust in what you're delivering. Yeah. And so like with our access clients, we're spending every month, they have access to our calendar for what we call a check-in call, where we're just asking them what's going on with their life and business. What sort of things are they doing that, you know, might have legal ramifications. We're asking questions. They're asking us questions. And then they, you know, on the fly are reaching out to us by phone, text, and email with, hey, this is what's going on? How should I handle this? Hey, can you review this document for us? And, you know, there's not extra cost attached to that. And so when there's not a cost and you start releasing, here's all this stuff that might be legal here, you guys take care of it. Mm -hmm. And it frees them to then go work on, you know, go on their dream, which is their small business. And now I believe right. the small business is the best vehicle to achieve your life goals and dreams. But a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of business owners get bogged down in doing things they shouldn't be doing you know, tax accounting and taxes, legal stuff. They should be using professionals to do that. And then focusing on working on the business or going home and being with their family and doing things that are fun, not doing legal work. I don't, you know, I use professionals for things like I don't, I don't drill my own teeth. I go to a dentist for that. Like, let's not do that. And no one's smart enough to figure out how to do it. I read the books, but that just doesn't seem like a good use of my time. No, that really that sounds terrible. Are there, are there any industries that you avoid working with? Not so or much industries. It's more sizes of businesses. You know, once you get over 40, 50 million, have a couple hundred employees, you've kind of outgrown us and you need someone in our time. And so we really are working with entrepreneurs that are, you know, trying to scale. They haven't already scaled, you know, they're not fortune 500 companies, you know, so there are companies that are just too big for us. And there are people that, that are still too small for us. I mean, if you don't have any capital and can't invest in your business, then, you know, there's nothing medical science can do for you. We can't help you. You've got to I mean, be properly capitalized. It's one of the biggest mistakes that business owners make. And so if you can't afford to have legal advice when you're starting up, then we're the least expensive option out there. But if you can't afford $5,000 for your first year of legal, then I, I've done everything I can. I don't know what else to do. Yeah. Will you share... Uh, an interesting problem you solved? Is there a story of a way that you were working with someone that you think would be interesting for people to to hear? Yeah, one of our clients, Sean, tells this story himself. But when he came on board, he was an, was an influencer and 
was getting contracts, right, for people that are wanting to pay him to promote their brands. And he got a contract in that he, it was a renewal contract that he would have normally just signed and sent back. But because he had become on, come on as an access member, he sent, he remembered like right before he signed it, sent it in and our team went through it and found that it was going to, it, it was going to end up costing him about $20,000 to do the deal. And so he ended up not doing the deal. Had he signed it, we might could have gotten him out of it. And so we were able to help him avoid that pain because he had us review it before he signed it. And most small business owners don't have anyone to do that for them. They're having to read it themselves. They don't really have a system for doing that and, or the expertise to do it. And so you can make some mistakes and we were able to help Sean avoid that $20,000 haircut. Yeah, that, that that sounds like a, a great problem to have solved and pre- and actually to pre- prevent it, which is, I think, more your point. Yeah. Will you share advice you've received that's influenced the way you approach your work? Sure. You know, early in my, in this journey, I started uh, following uh, Howard Partridge, who is a, is a mentor of mine at this point. And, and he's who taught me that, that the primary goal of business is to achieve your life goals and dreams. And his advice is to systematize everything. And I've been wor- working on that ever since. It's never, to me, it's never done. There's, you know, version 1.0 of systems and then you get better. Zig always said that anything worth doing well is worth doing poorly at first. And so I'm definitely do that. And then we improve the systems. And so, but he taught me that businesses need to be run on systems, not on talent. As someone who has worked across industries with multiple small businesses, it saves a lot of bottlenecking and headaches when you can. Yep extrapolate and create something. And also it helps new people understand how things work because you don't have to track down somebody to have them give all of the information. Yeah, hundred percent. Second that for anyone listening, good advice. I don't know about being a lawyer, but I do know about running a business and it can at times be exhausting or feel moments of discouragement. What do you do to keep yourself inspired? You know, I it, there definitely are times where I, could get into a little bit of a valley, but it's not often. I love what I do. I wake up ready to do it. I've got a pretty uh, good schedule to where I spend time on things that are important to me first part of the day, exercise, devotional, getting my coffee from Starbucks. Things that, and so that I can then work, then work the way I want to work. And I know everyone listening can't do that. You're at a different place in your business and there's definitely a time where you have to grind. But there's when you when you when you have the opportunity to set your own course rather than being an employee, it this just the thought of that inspires me that I can I can decide I can determine what the outcome for the day is going to be because it's my, I'm in charge. I'm not looking for some manager to tell me what to do that I can't be fired except for by my customers and that I can just find new mm-hmm. customers. And so it's, it's very rare that I get stuck down and there's, there's bad things to happen in, in my business for sure, negative things, but they don't define, I don't let them define my day. I don't let them bring what's going on because I'm blessed to be in a country where I can have a business. I'm free to, to run it the way I want to run it and I can work as hard or as little as I want to, I can determine all those things. And when you, when you're thank when you look at that and be thankful for what you have, you can take the focus off of the problems that you have. You know, if you don't have enough sales, not enough leads, you know, those are all, they're all problems. But if you just t- if you take a moment to be grateful for what you actually have and what you've been able to accomplish, you can easily get yourself out of that 
And then I've got friends that I can also reach out to you and, and say, Hey, I'm, I'm having a bad day. Tell me something good. What's a, what's a yeah. win that you're having so I can celebrate with you and then be encouraged that, Hey, I just need to get through this day. And then we see what tomorrow holds. Thanks. Those all sound like great suggestions. Is there anything that you would love to talk about that we didn't touch on? Well, I like talking about my book. I have book, The, Sh the Shatterproof Entrepreneur. If you're a small business owner trying to figure this business stuff out and the legal parts of it for sure, the book takes you through the six phases of shatterproofing your business from foundation all the way through legacy. And it's just so important that you build your businesses on the right structures and systems in the beginning or as early as possible so that it will survive. The term shatterproof is, is really all about resilience. We want to bend and not break. It's the, uh, the shatterproof glass in our windshields of this business vehicle that gives you vision and protection. And if you build this business correctly, those rocks that hit our windshields won't knock us off the road. They'll just mark it. We can then have our professionals deal with it later. We can keep doing what we're doing. But if you don't build this thing right, it can get knocked off the road very quickly. And you can go from hero to zero in no time. So surround yourself with the right people. It's one of the keys in the shatterproof process. And then follow the systems and you too can have a shatterproof business. That's, I, I'm going to go find that. Thank you. For folks that are listening, how do they learn more, follow you, get in touch? Yeah. So if they will go to the Instagram at the Scott Reeb would be a great place to go find us. And then we'll create a special page just for the listeners of this show. And on that page, we'll, I'll give you the show link. We'll have uh, a place where they can download a, a sneak preview of the book. So you can kind of see, hey, is this good for me? And then you can move from there to buy it if you want it. And there'll be a button where you can schedule what I call a laser legal coaching session with me. I'm not going to pawn you off on someone else. And you can tell me, tell me your life story, your business story. And I'll tell you uh, how I think there might be some legal things that you could address. And then you can go fix those yourself. Or if we can fix them for you, that'd be great. But I just want to make sure that we help you move forward in this entrepreneurial journey in a, in a good way. Thanks for being on the show, Scott. <laughs> really appreciate you showing up and sharing all of these details, because I do think a lot of us are scared of the legal stuff. Yeah, that's my pleasure. And thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll see you next week. Doot. I hope you enjoy the show. I love making it. If you did enjoy it, consider hopping over to the review portion of the platform you listen on and letting other people know about it or share the episode or the entire show with a friend or subscribe to the show. Definitely reach out, get on my newsletter, follow me on social media, and let me know what you like, what you don't like, and what you'd like to see in the future. While we love our guests, appearance on the Business As Unusual podcast or any Bicurian consulting production is for information purposes only and is not to be considered an endorsement of their business, business practices, or character. Please properly vet anyone you find through this podcast and generally before you do any business with them. Thank you for listening.